or tape, CDs, DVDs, to our publication, Voices from His Excellent Glory, Declaring the Kingdom, write P.O. Box 21516, Hot Springs, Arkansas, zip 71903. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. This is the Thursday evening service of May the 23rd, 1996, of the Memorial Day Camp Meeting being held at Lake Hamilton Bible Campgrounds, Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. Tommy Cook is the speaker for the evening. And commanded to loose the people right now in Jesus' name. I bind all witchcraft over this place, divination, any strongholds of the enemy that would hinder us in any way. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that you'll walk among us and talk among us in Jesus' name. Amen. How many know that Elijah's coming? Come on, he's going to restore the hearts of the fathers. Come on, to the children and the children to the fathers. How many know that's in the home and in the church? He's doing that. He's going to do it. Praise the Lord. I like what Brother Bill said, that the enemy is out to wear out the saints of the Most High. And that does mean wear them out mentally. And how many know the battle is right here tonight? Right in our minds. But thank God we can have the mind of Christ, can't we? And that's what we need. How many believe that? Yes. Amen. The mind of Christ is what we must have. The Lord has been speaking a lot of things to me lately, and I want to just share a few things uh, tonight. How many believe that the glory of God's coming? I said, how many believe the glory of God's coming? Yes. Hallelujah. Um, I believe it's coming. I believe we're going to see a gr the greater glory. The, this latter house, come on, the glory of this latter house, rather, is going to be greater than the... Former, hallelujah. Now, he didn't say the house would be greater. He said the glory would be greater. How many is expecting the greater glory? Amen. Well, how many know that to come into the glory of God, uh, it's by grace. you believe that? Amen. It's by Jesus. It's by suffering. It's by uh, meeting certain conditions. And as we enter the kingdom, we'll enter the glory. Hallelujah. So there's a lot there. And what is the glory? The glory is Jesus, first of all. Can somebody say Jesus? Hallelujah. He is the glory. How many know uh, the, the apostle said, we beheld his glory? Hallelujah. How many want to behold his glory tonight? Amen. And I believe that his glory is also in his mind. The mind of Christ is present. When we get in line with the mind of God, how many know the glory is present? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe that his nature is the very glory of God. His divine nature and expression among the people of God. I believe the glory is that quality uh, which is timeless. It's limitless. Amen. That God uh, is putting in us today. Hallelujah. I believe when a, there's a state of God's love among the people of God, we see the glory of God. I believe when faith is free from all questions, doubts, and mistrust, it, and it's, uh, it's, when it's perfect faith, that's a state of glory. When holiness is perfect without sin, that's glory. Praise God. But there's no glory apart from Jesus. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. The greater the suffering, the greater the glory. Yes. Amen. Now, look at us. let's go to a scripture. Turn to Romans uh, 8. Uh, I think it's verse 17. I want to start with here uh, tonight. And I appreciate being here. I really love to come to the campground. I've come many times. Uh, Romans 8. No, it's verse... Uh, let's go here. It's down to verses uh, uh, 18. Romans 8, 18. Romans 8, 18. For I reckon that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed where, brethren? In us. Now, how many know the suffering many times is in us? It's all kind of sufferings, of course. But Second Corinthians 1 said the suffering is also within us as well as the consolation. And yet Paul says right here in this very verse, he said, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time uh, are not worthy to be compared with the glory that's going to be revealed, going to be revealed in us. Hallelujah. I mean, oh, when the glory comes, the suffering and all you went through vanishes. Amen? You forget about it. Isn't that right? You're swept up in His presence. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. So, uh, and sometimes there seems to be no end to those going down experiences. But equally, there's no end to the coming up experiences. Can somebody say Amen. amen. It seems to be, uh, you know, dark experiences. But be assured, when there's dark experiences, there's going to be a lot of light experiences. Amen? Amen. In God. Now, look, uh, go over to the Old Testament. 
Uh, let's see some scriptures in Leviticus chapter 9. Let me know that there's three kinds of fire. There was the strange fire, the false fire, and then there was God's fire, and then there was judgment fire. And in Leviticus chapter 9, uh, verse 23, we see here uh, the glory associated with the fire. Chapter 9 of Leviticus, verse 23, And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation, and came out and blessed the people, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. They saw it, didn't they? They saw the glory. Now notice the next part. And there came a fire out from before the Lord, and consumed the altar, the burnt offering, and the fat, which when all the people saw, they shouted, come on, and fell on their faces. Hallelujah. I mean, when the glory is here, people's going to be worshiping. Come on, amen. They're going to fall on their face and worship the true and the living God. Go to Exodus 24. Exodus 24. We see uh, the fire and the glory associated together here. Chapter 24 of uh, Exodus and verse 15. Now, there's three things you need to see in this chapter. There was uh, Aaron, Nadab, Abihu, and the seven of the elders. They are, they're on one level. Then you got Joshua going up to another level. Then you got Moses going up and waiting six days on God. And on the seventh day, God's going to call to him, and he's going to enter into that glory. Hallelujah. I mean, oh, there's a 30-fold. Come on. 60, 100-fold. Thank God. Now, here in chapter 24, look at verse uh, 15. And Moses went up into the mount, and a cloud covered the mount. But remember, he had to wait six days to go into that, into that cloud. How many know we're in the sixth day? All right. And God's preparing us for the glory. Amen. Amen. God's preparing us to go up higher. Come on. Amen. Yes. And to move into that glory. Move into that kingdom. Praise God. And it says, And the glory of the Lord abode upon Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And the seventh day, praise God, uh, he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. And the sight of the glory of the Lord was like devouring fire on the top of the mount in the eyes of the children of Israel. So there was the glory and there was the fire. So when God's glory comes, His fire is present. Can you say amen? amen. Then one more scripture. Uh, 2 Chronicles 7 uh, and verse 1. 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 1. We want the glory, Lord. Hallelujah. God has to prepare us for that. Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 1. And it says, When Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering, the sacrifices, and notice, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Hallelujah. So when the fire fell, the glory fell. But look in verse 3, and notice again, the people did something. They bowed, they worshiped, and they praised the Lord. Hallelujah. So when, you, when, the, when the glory comes and the fire is present, you don't have to beg people to get down and praise the Lord. Come on, they're going to be praising the Lord, aren't they? They're going to be worshiping the Lord. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the uh, early apostles were saved by that glory. They was confirmed and established by that glory. They received life and ministry from the glory they had seen in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And I think of Paul's ministry. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. Acts 9, I want to look at a couple of scriptures here on Paul when he was converted uh, on the Damascus Road. I mean, know that the glory of God is the light of God Amen. and the brightness of God. Well, right here in Acts 9, verse 3, it says, brethren, uh, Paul, uh, here, Luke writes, As he journeyed, that is Paul, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Hallelujah. And we know that Paul fell uh, from the little donkey, and we know he cried out to the Lord, and uh, Jesus revealed himself to him, didn't he? Now look over in chapter 22, what he says. Chapter 22, verse 11, Paul said, And when I could not see for the glory of that light, notice that, I could not see for the glory of that light. How many know that light would blind you if you saw it in the fullness? <clears throat> Being led by the hand of them that were with me, I came into uh, Damascus. So somebody had to lead him by the hand and take him where he was going. And of course, later we know he was healed and received the Holy Ghost. Now, then in chapter 26, verse 13, uh, Paul said here in this verse now, concerning this light and this glory, he said, At midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven uh, above the brightness of the sun, 
shining round about me, and them which journeyed uh, with me. And of course, there were those who fell to the earth and so forth. And so Paul saw that light. He saw that glory. And, uh, and so did the early apostles. Now, let's go over to Peter, uh, 1 Peter 5. I want to take you to a scripture there. And uh, I want to stay here a few minutes in this scripture. I believe it's very important to see what we're going to share here in chapter 5 of 1 Peter. I may thank God for the Word of God tonight. We need the Word of God, don't we? 1 Peter 5 and verse 10 and 11. Let's read it together. If you have your Bibles, if you, especially if you've got King James, let's read that tonight in verse 10, okay? But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you. To Him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Praise God. Now, it says here, notice, the God of all grace. And we know God is a spirit, right? He's the Word. He is a consuming fire. He is the light. He is uh, all the light. <laughs> he is love. He is the kingdom. But it said the God of all grace here, Peter did. Uh, and then he said, who hath called us? Who hath called us unto what? What's he called us to? Come on. His eternal glory, which is a timeless, limitless thing. Because how many know God's timeless and limitless? Limitless. And notice it's by Jesus Christ. Then he said, after you suffered a while, he said, he'll make you perfect, establish, strengthen, settle you, and then to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Now, let's see who Peter's talking to here. Peter is, uh, who, is speaking, speaking, who is Peter speaking of here? He's speaking of God himself, the God, come on, of all grace. How many thank God for grace tonight? I wouldn't be here standing here if it wasn't for grace of God. I'd be in the grave. How about some of you? Amen. But the God of grace has called us, hasn't he? The God of grace, praise the Lord. The God of all grace. So Peter is speaking of God. Now, whom is Peter speaking uh, to? He's speaking to us because he says in that verse, look at that verse now. But the God of all grace who have called us. How many know that's the church, the body of Christ? He's called us. Amen. Praise the Lord. And so I'm glad he's called us. Amen. But called us where? Let's see who... Uh, what's he saying? Where, where we've been called to? Come on, again. Unto what? His eternal glory. The God of all grace has called us unto his eternal glory. Amen. Now, how or by what means have he called us to that eternal glory? By who? By Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. I mean, thank God for our Lord tonight. Amen. And when will it happen? After you suffered a while. I may thank God that when the while is over, <laughs> when you've suffered a while, <laughs> amen, <laughs> notice, what are the results <laughs> of suffering, though? Let's see what it is. He'll make you perfect. I may believe that we're to be perfect as he's perfect, amen. God is maturing us, isn't he? I'm not saying we're there <laughs> by a long shot. But I thank God for deliverance because it helps us to get there. Come on. Amen. As well as growing up in the Lord. And I thank God for the ministry of deliverance. It will make you perfect. It will establish us, strengthen us, settle us. And thank God we need to be settled, don't we? Amen. And strengthened. And we need, to be, uh, we need to be established. And God said, I will also perfect you. Praise God. Now, what's the result of this? Notice, look at the next verse. In verse 11. To Him be glory, come on, and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So God is doing a work in us. Praise the Lord. He's letting us go through some things. Now, if there's no suffering, there is no glory. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. But how many know we get our eyes off the suffering? We should. And get our eyes on the one. Come on. That will bring us into glory. Amen. He is the glory. Hallelujah. He is the glory. Now, look in 2 uh, Corinthians. Um, uh, no, I, I don't think I'll go there yet. <clears throat> I'll go there in just a minute. Praise God. But God can turn the suffering into glory. Amen? We know we've been justified. We're now being sanctified. And we shall be, come on, glorified. Isn't that right? Go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6. Peter talks a lot about suffering, doesn't he? I mean, no, he had a revelation of it. <clears throat> but he had a revelation of the glory of God. 1 Peter 1, 6. He said, brethren, uh, I believe in this verse. Uh, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, and for some, I mean, no, 
We need be. You're in heaviness through manifold, come on, temptations, that the trial of your faith. What's being tried? Come on now. Our faith, being much more precious than of gold that perishes, though it be tried with fire, might be found. Here's what God's after, isn't it? Praise and honor and glory at the appearing, come on, of Jesus Christ. And how many know that appearing's in you first before it's out there in here? Amen. Amen. And so forth. A lot more there. All right, now look in chapter 2, verse 19. 1 Peter 2, 19. It says here in verse 19, For this is thankworthy, if a man for conscience towards God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. How many in here, you don't have to raise your hand, but how many suffered wrongfully in some situations? I think we all have. Next verse. For what glory is it if when you be buffeted for your faults? And we know we've all made mistakes. And we've brought things on ourselves at times, haven't we? He said, you shall take it patiently. But if when you do well, and that's what God wants, and suffer for it, you take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto where you call, notice that, again, we're called to that, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that you should follow in his steps, hallelujah, who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth, who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judgeth righteously. Praise God. How many know he's our example tonight? He's the one we follow. Praise God. So he didn't revile back. He did not uh, uh, threaten and so forth. He committed himself, of course, to the Father, in which we have to do as well. Then we go over to chapter 3 of Peter, 1 Peter 3, verse 15. 1 Peter 3, 15. And the Scripture says here, uh, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of something. Now, look at this. Of what? Come on. Of the hope. How many know that hope's in us tonight? Amen. Of the hope that's in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience, that whereas they speak evil of you, as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation or your manner of life in Christ. For it's better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Then we go over to chapter 4. Look at verse 1 and 2. Verse 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise. How many is getting armed <laughs> for the test? Amen. With the same mind, the mind of Christ. For he that suffered in the flesh has seized from Sin. Praise God. Well, you know, how many know it's awful easy just to, to, to uh, threaten and say things you shouldn't say many times? But how many know God's got to get a hold of this old tongue? Amen? And get a hold of it. Come on. It's, it's within. That power with, must come in us. Amen? To control us. Isn't that right? right? Our emotions, our thoughts, and so forth, in order to not to strike back. Praise the Lord. Then look in chapter 4, verse 4. I'm giving you this verse with another verse I'm going to give you. Look in verse 4 there. Wherein they think it strange that you run not with them to the same excessive right, evil speaking of you. Now look down to verse 12. Again, he says, Beloved, think it not strange. Now notice in verse 4 and verse 12, he's using the word strange. Think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. Ever felt like something strange happening to you? Yeah. Well, if you're going through it, you will be. You will feel that. Hey, where have I missed it? What have I done? What have I said? Who have I accused? You know, whatever. How many of you ever get to checking yourself out? Come on, amen. We all do. And then he said, But rejoice in so much as you are partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad, notice, also with exceeding joy. And if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you for the spirit of glory, notice that, and of God resteth upon you, on their part he's evil spoken of, but on your part he's glorified. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 16. Yet if any man suffers a Christian, let him not be ashamed, let him glorify God on this behalf. Now, if you'll notice back down earlier, he's talking about giving God glory in the trial, but now in the testing, uh, yes, I mean in the, in the gifts, excuse me, back here in verse 10. Look back to verse 10 and 11, especially verse 11. Uh, he's talking about the gifts here. If any man minister, let him do it as the ability which God giveth, that God in all things may be glorified. So in the gift we glorify God, and in the trial we glorify God. I mean, always pleased with that. Amen. Then chapter 5. Chapter 5, he's speaking to the elders, the shepherds here of the church. How many thank God for shepherds tonight? The real shepherds of God. Amen? 
Verse 1, he said, The elders which are among you I exhort, who also am an elder, a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker, come on, of the glory that shall be revealed. But what does the glory follow? Come on. It's going to follow the suffering. And we're not just getting our eyes on suffering tonight, but it's going to be there, isn't it? I mean, those she shepherds are going through things today, isn't that right? Some are going through great trials and struggles in their ministry, in their churches, and various places. But God is going to bring the glory. Hallelujah. Now look at verse 2. Feed the flock. Or literally, yeah, feed the flock, a flock, shepherd the flock. That's among you. Taking the oversight, not by constraint, willingly, not for money or filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, not being lords over God's heritage. That another translation says, don't be little ten gods. But being examples or examples to the flock. In verse 4, when the chief shepherd, Jesus shall appear, you shall, shepherds, receive a crown of life, a glory that fades not away. Hallelujah. So there's some conditions that's got to be met there, though. There's some conditions. Amen? It's got to be met. Can you say amen? You know, as I was going through the Scripture the other night, the Bible talks about the glorious church, I mean, the glorious gospel of Christ, the glorious gospel. It talks about a glorious church in Ephesians. And yet it talks about His glorious power. And then it talks about the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. There's a lot in the Scripture about glory. Can you say amen? amen. Hallelujah. Thank God for the glory of God tonight. Amen. Now, look in John 17, verse 5. And I know you know this Scripture, but let's turn there. Verse 5, Jesus said, He's praying to the Father, and Jesus said, And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Preexistent glory. Now look down to verse, what, 20, what is it, 22. Uh, and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. God has given us the glory to bring us into oneness and unity. Amen. Not only with one another, but even in God. Hallelujah. Now, turn to Revelation chapter uh, 21. Let's see it here. We see the church here in chapter 21 has come into this glory. I mean, oh, we can talk about it, but I want to experience it. Come on. Anybody else here want to see it and hear it and experience it? Chapter 21, verse 11. Actually, it's what I want. We're talking about the new Jerusalem. We're talking about the bride of Christ. And in verse 21, having, that word having is the word echo or echoing. Uh, the glory of God and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And I believe that when this glory comes, how many know it's going to clean, clean us up? Come on, amen? It's going to deliver us and bring us to a place where it said we're clear as crystal. How many know today we're not quite there? <laughs> we're not there, amen? But God's going to bring us to that place where the church is clear. There's no darkness. Come on, amen? There's no more demon activity. Huh? He wants, to, he wants to clean us up. You know, the final deliverance will be Revelation 12. Do you know that? Look over in Revelation 12 a minute. Oh, I was going to preach on this chapter tonight, but I thought I'd better not. <laughs> not that I didn't want to. I love it. But I want to show you something. How many know when the man-child is brought forth, the overcomers, how many know that the woman goes into the wilderness in her time of testing? Now, I know there's a lot of things we can teach that, that's in the past. But how many old scriptures can te teach of past, present, and future? Isn't that right? Amen. And sometimes people say it's all in the past. Well, I believe that. I believe that some things are in the past. But I also believe there's a lot for today Amen. and tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. And so sometimes we just throw it all in the past and say that's it. But I, I think it's wrong to say that sometimes in certain scriptures. But in chapter 12, when the woman goes into her testing time, uh, the Bible said, look down to verse 7. And there was war. Come on, where? Where is this war at? Where was the woman at? In heaven. The woman's in the same heaven where the dragon is, or the dragon's where the woman is. And in verse 7, it said there was war in heaven, and I believe we're in the war, don't you? Anybody here not in a war tonight? Huh? I think we're all in it. There was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. The dragon fought in his angels and prevailed not, neither there was their place found in the war. Where? In heaven. In heaven. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceived the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Amen. Now notice you've got the, the great red dragon, 
You've got the old serpent, you've got the devil, you've got Satan. How many believe that that nature is being dealt with and going to be cast out of somebody? Hmm? Out of you and me. And I see the overcomers being set free first and the others following. And I'm not putting anybody on a pedestal now, but I, I really believe that. But I don't believe we'll ever come to sonship without deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank God for deliverance tonight. Amen. But I believe the final deliverance, the final blow will be right here at the end of this age. Praise God. When God uh, cleans, cleans us up. Amen. And we truly become those overcomers. There's a lot I could say about that. But anyway, God is filling his church with glory. I believe that. Uh, with all my heart, praise God. Now, let's go over to some scriptures I want to give, I want to, give to you in just a second. Let I me mean, know that when Moses' temple was built uh, by the pattern of God, God's glory filled it. When Solomon's temple was built, God's uh, glory filled it. When Jesus came, how many know he came in the fullness? Hallelujah. And uh, he was full of the glory of God. And how many know his body in this hour is being filled, or going to be filled with his fullness? We haven't come to that fullness yet. Come on, we were forgiven the outer court, filled in the, in the holy place, but the fullness is yet to be reached. How many want to reach for the fullness tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Passover, Pentecost, Tavern. You know the whole story. Some of you do. Praise God. Now, I want to show you four relationships of this glory in the New Testament. Turn to Acts 7. Acts 7. And let's see what God says here. Acts 7, verse 2. <clears throat> Notice, and he said, and this is Stephen preaching, and he said, men and brethren and fathers, hearken, the God of glory. Let's say that. The God of glory. Notice, appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Sharon. Okay. And so we know God brought a revelation to Abraham. Pack up your bags, buddy, and get going. <laughs> and I'll show you where you're going to go. But he's called the God of glory. Hallelujah. I mean, know oh, we worship this God of glory tonight. Amen. Amen. In spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. And He is the eternal glory. He is that lim limitless glory, the timeless glory. He is it all. Ephesians 1, 17. Let's look at the second relationship here uh, with glory in the New Testament. Ephesians 1, 17. <clears throat> 1, 17 says this, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the Father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom, come on, and revelation in the knowledge of Him. How many want that revelation tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. It comes from the Father of glory. Can you say amen? amen. Praise God. The Father of glory. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the Father of Jesus. And the Father has a family, doesn't He? Amen. Hallelujah. Are you glad you're part of the family tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so we as children are partaking of that Glory of God. Amen. He said, The Father of glory may give unto us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of Him. Hallelujah. So He is the Father of glory. Then look in 1 Corinthians 2.8. 1 Corinthians 2.8. <clears throat> now look at this scripture. 1 Corinthians 2.8. It says, Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. I mean, no, they weren't too smart after all. Huh? Notice what he calls them. The princes of this world. Everybody see that? The princes of this world. And notice he said, they would have not have crucified the Lord of glory. I mean, no, the Lord in his rightful uh, inheritance is glory. It, and that's his rightful place and title. The Lord from glory. The Lord of glory. The Lord whose place is glory. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. And I want to know him in that reality of that glory. Praise God. And God made foolish the wisdom of this world, didn't he? They calls him the princes of this world. Amen. God chose the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Amen. Amen. Then look in 1 Peter <clears throat> chapter 4. I believe it's 1 Peter 4. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. 1 Peter 4, 13. Amen. Yes, but rejoice in so much as you're partakers of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you. Amen? Praise God. So let me thank God for the spirit of glory tonight. 
Amen. The God of glory, the Father of glory. Amen. Now, look in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Let me know that there's a lot here spoken of in this whole chapter, which I'm not going to read. But you need to read from verse 1 through 18, and then go into chapter 4 as well. But let's just go into a few verses here in chapter 3, and then I want to tell you seven things here, if you want to write them down. 2 Corinthians 3, uh, verse 14. Let's go back to verse 13. And not as Moses, which put a veil over his face that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. But their minds were blinded, for until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament. Which veil is done away where? Come on, brethren. Right. In Christ. Okay? But even unto this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it, that is the heart, shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be... Taken away. Now, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image. Come on, from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And then if we need to go, actually go in and read some of the other uh, chapter 4. Now, I want to tell you seven things here, though. If, you'll write, if you want to write them down, you're welcome to. I'll try to go slow. Number one, the median, the medium, the medium of glory, the medium of glory is the Holy Spirit. The medium of glory is the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of glory. Look, look there in verse 19, 18 again. He said that we're changed how by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. So the medium of glory is the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Number two, number two, the instrument of the glory, the very instrument of the glory will be the Word of God uh, coming alive by the Holy Spirit. Look in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. 2 Corinthians 4, 4. And whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is what? The image of God, the image of God should shine unto them. Now, you notice here he said the glorious gospel of Christ is the image and then back down, down in verse 18, he said, we're changed into that same image. Isn't that right? So the instrument of the glory is the Word of God coming alive by the Holy Spirit. Somebody say amen. And producing glory in you and me. Hallelujah. How many know there's a glorious gospel tonight? <laughs> now, number three. Number three, the sum, S-U-M, the sum of the gospel is, uh, the sum of the, excuse me, the sum of the glory is Christ. The sum of this glory is Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 14. Look in verse, uh, verse 14. But their minds were blinded until this day, remaining the same veil, and taken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ, or in the anointed one. Yeah, in Christ. All right, now, look at 2 Corinthians again, 4, 4. Again, he says, it is the glorious gospel of Christ, or the anointed one. So, the sum of the glory is Christ. Thank God for Christ. Amen? All right? The glorious gospel. How many know the letter still kills? <laughs> but the Spirit gives life. Isn't that right? Number, uh, number, uh, yeah, okay. Number four, the Son, S-O-N, the Son of glory, of course, is Jesus Christ. The Son of glory, 2 Corinthians 4, 6. Look in verse 6 of chapter 4. For God who commands the light to shine out of darkness has shined somewhere, come on, in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of somebody. Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, the Son of glory is Jesus Christ. And number five, number five, the place, the place of the glory, the place of the glory is the heart of the believer. He just said that in verse 6. He shined in our hearts. Amen. And over in verse chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, But even to this day when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when it, the heart shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Hallelujah. So the place of glory is in the heart of the believer. That's in your heart and my heart. Amen? Praise God. Then number six. Number six, the effect. The effect of the glory. The effect of this glory in the heart is transformation. The very effect of this glory in the heart is transformation, transfiguration, being changed. How many want to be changed tonight? Amen. Look in that verse, chapter 3, verse 18. What does it say? But we all with an open face beholding 
Uh, and that word beholding there, it means reflecting. Reflecting as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed, are transformed, are transfigured into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Can you say amen? So we're being transformed, aren't we? We're being, uh, we're being changed, praise God, into the very same image in, uh, from glory to glory. Come on, from glory to glory. Amen? Amen. It's progressive. Aren't you glad? Amen. We couldn't stand it all at once, could we? Number seven, the power, the power of the glory is liberty or freedom. Look there in verse 8, 17, verse 17 of chapter 3. Now, the Lord is that Spirit, or literally where the Spirit is Lord. But where the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Hallelujah. There is freedom. Somebody shout amen. amen. And if we don't have liberty and freedom, pray till we get it. <laughs> till the glory comes down. Can you say amen? Amen? How many know our Christian life should be glorious and we should be glorious Christian? Amen. Hallelujah. And when he shall appear, come on, somebody's going to be like him. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. We're going to be like him. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And we know what Pentecost was born with the glory. And how many know God's going to end it with a greater glory? We said that all ago. Haggai said again that this house will have the greater glory. Praise God. So we've come through Passover. We've come through Pentecost. But how many know somebody's reaching for tabernacles tonight? Amen. So I just want to share a quick word tonight on that. I think I'll uh, bless you. And uh, we've got a lot more we could share, but we'll just touch, leave it there tonight. But let's stand tonight and pray. I want to minister maybe as the Lord directs. Let's just stand and give the Lord praise. Amen. Let's ask God. Let's ask God for the glory. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you. We pray for the glory. We pray for the glory in this meeting, Lord. In this, uh, these meetings, Lord, each day and each night, Lord. Give us the glory, Father. Let it fall upon this camp meeting. Let it come in the deliverance. Let it come in healing. Let it come in salvation, Lord. Oh, Father, let your glory come. Let the glory come upon us, Lord. Hallelujah. In a mighty way, Lord. And we give you honor and praise. Father, I thank you for all the things that we've all went through, Father. I thank you, Father. Let it be for your glory, Lord. Any suffering that we went through, Lord, let it be for the glory of God. Lord, that we might see the glory, that we might inherit the glory, that we might come into the glory in this end time. We thank you, Father. Praise God. I got a word for several here. I want to obey the Lord. Brother Bill, I have a word for you. Uh, my son, know that thou, thou hast been obedient to the Lord. The Lord has stood with thee in the crisis. And know that God shall help you in the days ahead. Yea, the Lord shall open thine eyes, and thou shalt see even greater things in the days ahead, saith God. For I, I am with thee this night. To my light to shine round about thee, my son. And know that the Lord's victory is thine. And yea, I shall bring thee up into greater victory, greater anointing, and greater direction from the Holy Spirit. Know that God shall bring a great change even in thy ministry in the days ahead. And God shall give you prayer warriors that will pray for you you and intercede for you. And the Lord said, Be not fearful of those sights and things thou shalt see. I am with thee to protect thee and keep thee and cover thee. And know that I shall direct thy heart. I shall direct thy uh, walk, saith the Lord. I am with thee this night. And the Lord has touch your hearing. The Lord does speak into thy ear a new word, a uh, word that you know, but a, a word, deeper word, the Lord saying, of even that which I've put in thee, saith the Lord. And that word shall keep thee in the hour of trial. That word shall bring thee through. For yea, my power is upon thee, my son. Walk thou in it, and thou shalt see the greater glory, for I brought you to this time, for this day, uh, this day, for this time, and this hour, saith the Lord, and thou shalt truly see, and thou shalt go forth as uh, apostolic ministry in the Lord, and thou shalt speak the word of the Lord, and thou shalt see as ne thou hast not seen, thou shalt know as thou hast not known, for I, the Lord, am with thee this night, saith God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him tonight. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. The hand of the Lord is upon thee for good. And know that my belt and girdle of truth I'm putting upon thee. I've given you the ear of truth, saith the Lord. And yea, know that I've covered your front and I've covered your back. And the Lord is leading this step at a time. Be not fearful, be not afraid. For yea, in the days ahead thou shalt take a bold step. And thou shalt even leap uh, in faith, the Lord says. And thou shalt ascend even in thy God. For God has great things for thee and for thy family, saith the Lord thy God. That's my wife. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise, are you all husband and wife? Yes. Okay. Praise the Lord. Father, Father, we just pray for this couple right now, Lord. Reach your hands out to them, please. 
Father, we lift them up and we thank you for the love of God that, that I, I see in this person, Lord. And I ask the Holy Spirit to minister life and strength and help to them right now, Lord. I ask you to quicken that hearing ear. Oh, yes. yes. Quicken that heart, Lord. And, Lord, lead and direct them in, in the direction you've called them to, Lord, even this night, Father God. We just ask uh, prayers for them tonight, Lord. We ask you to surround them with your power and your anointing, Father God. We believe new directions shall come for them, Father God. Yes. We believe there will be a new hearing, Father, from the Holy Spirit, Lord. And the day uh, the bygone days are over, Lord. It's a new day. It's a new time for them, Lord. And I believe, Lord, with them and for them. And right now, Lord, I just take dominion over the enemy. And I bind him, Father God. And I loose that new anointing. I loose that new glory. I loose that new direction upon them, Lord. Upon their walk line, it will be in the direction, guidance of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Come on, let's praise him tonight. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's praise him tonight. Praise God. Praise God. Reba, Reba, the Lord says, is, is coming a new direction for you. Walk. I'm just seeing the Lord taking you higher, okay? And the thing, the struggles you went through, God said, many of those struggles will be over in this hour because you stood fa uh, in faith with God and God will visit you in a mighty way, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Let's praise Him tonight. Come on, let's praise our God tonight. Let's praise Him tonight. Come on, let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Let's, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord stands in the battle, in the midst of the battle, and the Lord turns the battle to the gate. God says, fret not and fear not, for the battle is mine, not yours. And in the days ahead, God shall turn it to victory, and the victory, yea, shall overcome the battle, and, the, and shall overcome every enemy, every foe that stood in thy way. And a new anointing shall come, a wave of the anointing shall come, and shall keep thee and cause thee to move up higher in the Lord. And God shall open your eyes, and you shall see the things leave the people as you pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him tonight. Glory be to Jesus. Let's praise our God tonight. Praise you, God. Praise you, Jesus. Let's praise Him. Come on, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Duran, I believe there's going to be an increase in your fellowship uh, there. Uh, there's been a lot of warfare in the Spirit, of course, but God said uh, through that and, and with the battles even that you've been through, God said, I'm going to raise you up higher. I'm going to raise a congregation higher, and I'm going to bring others in in this hour. There's going to be a revival breakout in that area. And God said, Rejoice, because it will happen very soon, saith the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise you, Jesus. Come on, somebody, praise the Lord tonight. Praise the Lord tonight. Lord, let your glory fall. Let your glory fall. Hallelujah. Praise God. Who needs healing? Raise your hands tonight. Just stand right where you are. Raise your hands if you need healing. Come on. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come against every infirmity in their bodies right now, Father. We ask, Father, the glory of God, the healing power of Jesus to flow into their bodies right now from the head, through their arms, through their chest, through the hips, their legs, Lord, through every part of their body, down to their feet, Father God. We curse every infirmity in this place. Heavenly Father, we ask the virtue of Jesus, the healing power of Christ, flow and heal tonight. Heal cancer, Lord. Heal heart uh, problems. Heal the veins, Lord. Heal, Lord. The bones. Heal the eyes tonight. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You are the healer. Let your healing virtue flow. Let it touch the people tonight, Lord. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Mighty God. Father, lift up the ministries, each one here tonight. The, their families, and, and as they minister, help them, bless them, encourage them. Use them in this place, Father. I pray, Lord, let great deliverance take place and healing and, and whatever you want to do in this place. The prophetic, Lord, whatever, Jesus, do it, we pray. Lord, we lift up Jack tonight. Jack and his wife and family. Lord, touch Brother Harris. We pray healing and health for Brother Har uh, Harris tonight. We curse the wicked one that's come against him. Lord, that's attacked his ministry. We ask that you heal Brother Jack, Lord. Deliver him, we ask, in the name of Jesus. And everybody said amen. 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 Praise God. Anybody else, got a, anybody else got a word from the Lord? Praise God. All right. Bill, close in prayer, Bill.
Praise God. Our Father, we're so grateful for this. Exalt your name, Lord, and see your word in action, Lord. Lord, seeing deliverance being wrought with innocent yes. days. Father, not only that we'll be a hearer of this word, but we will be a doer of it. Yes. That we will assimilate it to our lives. And yes. we praise you for yes. it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, bless you. Praise God. Back tomorrow morning, 6 o'clock. For surely the Lord God is among thee this night. Know that my presence is here, and I walk among my candlesticks, saith the Lord. Yea, raise your hearts and your hands to me, and praise me this night. For I shall do a work in this hour, in this day, in this time, saith the Lord. And that work shall astonish many, and it shall even tingle the ears of many, saith the Lord. But I, the Lord thy God, am a great God, and a jealous God. And I shall move on the left and on the right. And I have my called ones, my anointed ones, in this hour that I'm bringing forth. <laughs> yea, submit thy heart to thy Lord this night. For surely the glory of the Lord shall come upon this place. And my presence shall rest upon thee as you come in to, into my presence. And as you come into that my presence with singing and worshiping me. Know that I shall do a strange work and a mighty work. So humble yourself, my people. I shall do healing and miracles oh, in this meeting, said the Lord. Yes. I, the Lord, oh, am thy God. I am the true and the living God. So submit thyself to me, and I shall walk among thee, and I shall talk among you, and I shall do the wonder, saith the Lord, for I am a miracle God, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Glory to God, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah, God. Praise God. So think it not strange concerning the trial that you've been through. Yea, thou shalt walk through the fire, and thou shalt not be consumed. I am with thee, saith the Lord. Ye have allowed the testing. It has brought you to, to this place. And I shall have a greater salvation for thee as you submit yourself to me, as you walk humbly before the Lord. Know that I am with you in the fire. I am with you in the trial. I am with you in the suffering. But I am, I am there, saith the Lord. Even as I was with the Hebrew children, I was in the midst of the fire. And I'm among you this night, saith the Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. I'm praising the Lord. I'm praising the Lord. In everything that I We're praising the Lord. We're praising the Lord. In everything that happens, we're praising the Lord. We're praising the Lord. We're praising the Lord. In everything that happens, we're praising the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep praising the Lord. He prays in our 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 Lord. He pr
Can you praise the Lord tonight? Did you hear the prophecy tonight? Get your hand and praise the Lord. Be free of this sir, tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, and the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty revelation on the glory of the Lord as the waters come to All over the world, the Spirit is moving. All over the world, as the prophet said it would be. All over the world, there's a mighty Deep down in my heart, this spirit is moving. Deep down in my heart, as the prophet said it would be. Deep down in my heart, there's a mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. All over the church. The Spirit is moving. Thank God. All over the church. As the prophet said it would be. All over the world. In the mighty revelation of the glory of the Lord. And the waters of the sea. I've got something that the world can't give. And the world can't take it away. Something that the world can't and it keeps me there by me. I've got something worth talking about. Makes me sing and it makes me shout. I've got something that the world can't give and the world can't take it away. tonight. The narrow, the way is narrow, but you're still on the way. Aren't you glad? The world can't take it away from you. Hey, all the devils in hell that's growing tonight cannot take it away from you. If you keep your minds made upon him, if you keep your eyes upon Jesus, then nothing can take it away from you tonight. Aren't you glad of that? Oh my, brother Bill. Hallelujah. These people are coming to receive. Hallelujah. Can't you feel it tonight? Can't you be moved and know that God is in the midst of his people to do a work in all of us tonight, to change us into his likeness, not within ourselves tonight, but change us into his likeness, little by little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Oh, my. And it's moving tonight. So get in the move of God. Get in there and get with it tonight. Hallelujah. For God is going to do a great work in your life. And you hear what he said? Healing. How many needs a healing tonight? Oh, I'm going to put both of my hands up. I need a healing. He said he was here tonight to heal, to heal and to set free. Hallelujah. God's in the healing business. He's never changed. He said, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. God hasn't changed. People have changed. But God has not changed. So if you need a healing tonight, believe it and receive it. Believe it and receive it. You hear what the prophecy was. God's here to heal tonight. And I want to be healed, don't you? And tomorrow. And the next day. He never changes, Brother Bill. He's always.
he's the same. He's the same God that he was to Elijah and Elisha, to Jeremiah and all the prophets, and he's the same God tonight. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Oh, my, nothing's impossible with him tonight. Nothing is impossible with God. All things are possible to those that believe. We're certainly happy to have each of you. We have a lot of ministries that's already come in, but I tell you, I'm expecting, I'm expecting, whether you expect it or not, but I'm expecting for something to happen in this tabernacle before I leave here Monday morning. I'm expecting it, because I know that God, I've been standing upon a promise for 17 years, and God has never failed a shed, and it's going to happen, folks. If it goes another 17 years, I still believe that God's going to do it. My faith, my faith is in Him tonight. Not into the doctors, not into man, but my faith is in Him tonight. 17 years I've been standing up on a healing. But you know what? That means I'm not healed because God's going to manifest it. And when He manifests it, you talking about somebody shouting, you ain't seen nothing yet. Because I know the evidence will go when Jesus comes and does the work. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Hallelujah. I'm happy tonight in Jesus. Oh, what, what would we do without him tonight? We'd be, be miserable. We'd be like a ship tossed here and there without a place to go. But I'm glad that Jesus came down and founded you and me tonight and placed and established our feet upon a firm, a firm foundation. Not one that's rocky. Not one with sand. But we have a sure foundation tonight. And that's in the Lord. Oh, the rock. Here's the rock that is higher than I tonight. Hallelujah. Oh, my Lord, what do we do now? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. His name is His name is 
Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Lord, and God, Father, thank you for your name tonight. Thank you for that name above all names tonight. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. For he is Lord. He Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. This is the end of this message. Our website is www.lakehamiltonbiblecamp.com and lhbconline.com. There are many free audio files there. It's like going to Bible school at home. Thank you.